back, people, to No More Decor. I'm AJ. I'm Daniel. And today we have a guest of the show. Very special guest of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, actually. And um, Ted, uh, do you want to introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? To our international audience? Yes. Sure. Uh, I'm Ted Schwartman. Uh, you know, I'm 50 one years old. I live here in uh, the Dallas, Texas area. Uh, I am an opponent of Medicare for All. He opposes Medicare for All. Are you a opponent of Bernie Sanders also? Yes, very much so. Okay. But we did spot you at a his rally. I, I, I was at his rally, actually. <laughs> you were reformed. <laughs> I'm, I'm reformed, yeah. I, I, I thought twice. Okay. Okay, that's after, good. After going to the rally or? Uh, yeah, after going to the rally, I uh, opposed my thoughts again on mm-hmm. the, on the uh, idea of Medicare for all. And I said, you know, I don't like it. Okay, fair enough. What so, happened? What happened at the rally? Were you molested or something? Did somebody touch you? <laughs> did Bernie not touch you? Is that what? <laughs> you didn't get a sticker. You can have my sticker. I mean, <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. What happened at the rally, Ted? Uh, it was a good rally. I was I was uh, 100% in support of him at that time. Right, but right. Then I thought about it again. I said, you know, there's there's a reason why we don't do that. We want people to pay their bills. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, so people without insurance who don't pay their bills, what about them? Who go to the emergency room and we pay for them. Is that? Uh, that happens all the time. Is that okay? Obviously, we're, we're the richest country in the world. We're doing something right. Yeah. Now, are we rich or is the country rich? Are the people rich? Are they better off because we're so rich? Uh, yeah, definitely. Compared to other countries? Definitely. What are the metrics you're using to determine that? Uh, the metrics I use to determine that is uh, I can see the houses that we live in. I can see the cars that we drive. Mm-hmm. And I'd seen those houses and the cars that we drove when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And we've gone from a thousand square foot home to 3,500, 4,000 square feet homes. Mm -hmm. From a little bitty small broken down car to a car that's, uh, you know, uh, four or five cars in the garage. Mm -hmm. I mean, people obviously are flourishing. People? Everyone? I wouldn't say everyone, but in in uh, a majority of the people in the United States that are working, uh, you know, are flourishing. Mm -hmm. You can see it all over the place. Okay. AJ? So what does that have to do with the Medicare for All? Uh, if uh, If you have a car... If you have five cars, why does that matter with the Medicare for All? What does that have to do with Medicare for All? It yeah. means that, that obviously you have money in the bank. You're making a good amount of money. You couldn't have gotten a loan on uh, your house or your cars in order to purchase them if you weren't making a good amount of money. And, and, and we're saying, okay, well, you can afford it, but we're going to give it to you. I think that if you can afford it, then you should pay your bills. Okay. You obviously can afford cars. You got, you know, several cars in the in the garage, and you got a, this big, huge, nice house, and and literally you could get a uh, credit card. You can get a loan from the bank. You can get a loan uh, loans all over the place from your four hundred one k from this. The, but people want to have all these investments. But yet they don't want to pay for their health care. Okay. Uh, um, they, they have, uh, you know, their health care. You know, they got their insurance, but they're saying, uh, I don't um, want insurance anymore. I want the government to be my insurance company. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, so you want to ration... Healthcare based on income? Is that how I hear you? No, I'm not. I'm not rationing healthcare. I'm. I'm saying that as a as a uh, individual, you can have your healthcare. 
you can have your company based health care, you can buy your own health care. There, there's there's all avenues that are out there for you. I'm not I don't think that I mean let me put it the libertarian way is that if you are a healthy you, you jog every day. You eat the right foods. You pass McDonald's up without stopping in, mm. and um, you really take good care of your of your body and your teeth and everything. Why am I going to take money out of your pocket to pay for somebody that stops in at McDonald's every day and doesn't jog and doesn't eat the right things and and uh, allows himself to go? That's part of our founding is that we were oppressed by taxes of Britain, and we were fighting, uh, you know, the Boston Tea Party was about taxation. But without representation. Yeah, well, okay, we'll, we'll tell you we're going to take money from you. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, compute to me. For somebody that is doing all the right things, why, why take his money? Uh, it's the same way as with everything else, right? Building roads or military spending, or that's how they do it. I went, I'm, I'm not going to the military, right? I'm not under yeah. threat by Russia or anybody else, but I pay taxes because the military has to be funded somehow. Yeah, we don't we don't believe any of those wars. We didn't ask us to go into Iraq, but we are paying for it. We we did kind of ask for them to go to, into Iraq. I didn't. I didn't either. <coughs> well, you you voted and. And all the senators and congressmen voted on that war in Iraq. But did we know that we're going to vote for it, though? We never know. Well, that's part of our system. Uh, of course it is. And so are taxes. Taxes are part of our system, but we have a limit on taxes. We say uh, if you have uh, you have options for medical care. Yeah. And we're not going to make the people that – we're not going to uh, tell people that can afford – their health care. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll pay it for you. Now, is that what we're talking about, though? Or are we talking about taxation to pay for medical care? Or we're not asking oh. people to. We're not going to. The government's not going to pay for your health care, right? You're gonna, they're going to charge taxes, and that's how it's paid for. They're not just going to create the money for it, right? Yeah, they're going to tax you yeah. for it. Like most other countries do. Like, okay, a lot of other countries do, and we do too. Yeah. Yeah, we, but, we do that for... The poor and the disabled and the uh, uh, elderly. Yeah, and, and we're saying that you're young, and you and you have plenty of money, and uh, but no, we don't want you to pay your bills. We want to pay them for you. Now, and most Americans that don't have do. plenty of money. That's you not borne out by the facts. You, you think that they have debt? They not have, plenty of money, though. They have debt because they are able to get a loan they have a yeah. job and when you can get a loan mm -hmm. then you can get a loan to pay your medical bills i mean should we have it's to the should it's we have to get a loan to pay medical bills shouldn't it be a right it isn't that no i don't think so you don't think so i don't think that it should be a right to take from people to give to people who can afford their own health care so then you don't believe in taxes at all then is that right like, like this year oh that's not that i don't believe in taxes i do believe in taxes okay but this year uh, we have uh, myself. Okay, the company that I work for paid seven thousand five hundred dollars for my health care. Mm. Then I spent this year about two thousand dollars of my own money, sure. and my daughter went in for surgery. So, uh, I mean, if I'm getting away, the uh, company grand, paid thirty-two thousand. I mean, uh, twenty-four thousand dollars on your behalf. Twenty-four thousand dollars on my behalf this year. Yeah. I, I I researched it and I said seventy-five hundred. But twenty-four thousand dollars—that's a whole lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Twenty-four thousand from you, company, and then uh, almost six thousand from you, from your check. From my check. I did the math on that. And and, okay. uh, and plus you have a high deductible. If you have a high deductible. Yeah. Then you pay another three thousand on that. So your total cost of insurance before insurance kicks in is around thirty three, thirty four thousand dollars. Well, 
I have to disagree because I have the high deductible, and I and I had my kid go to surgery, and I had to pay my deductible before that, and I paid a little over a thousand dollars on my deductible. That's on the on the surgery part, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but as a family, you have a deductible to meet, which is three thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Um, He's right. There, I mean, you can get that figure from your W two every year. There is a box in, I think, eight. It's called uh, Section DD, <laughs> and that's where your medical um, uh, f- basically what the company has paid on your behalf is listed. Yeah, for every American that has an employer uh, provided healthcare. They get that information. It's required for them to provide that to you under Affordable Care Act. That was part of the deal. You mean Obamacare? Obamacare. Sorry. I just want to be clear what we're talking about here. <laughs> it's Biden Care now. Now it's Biden Care. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I looked it up this morning and I said, "Oh, I didn't realize they changed the name." So do you you don't think uh, paying uh, thirty three thousand dollars is taxation also? And without you getting nothing. Well, he's not paying 30000 No, he's not, but he's paying around $10,000 because $6,000 is uh, deduct, uh, from his check and plus another 3000 in deductible before health insurance kicks in. And then they give me another 1200 for uh, my spending account. Mm. So you can take that out so you still have $9,000. That you have to come up with, plus the company pays twenty four, so they're paying money towards your um, your health insurance. Is that not getting something for nothing? I mean, you're are you getting subsidized? You're not paying for it. Is it a perk of just working at the company? Yeah. Um. Perk. It, you know, I I uh, I would have to say on that one, uh, I think that it is a it is a benefit for working at my at my job. They 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 want the best talent, uh, and they offered this. They started this themselves years ago saying that we're here, we're trying to get the best talent around. If you come to work for our company, this is the benefit package that you get. They also give you money in your 401k. They give you all these different benefits to work at their at their company. So I would think it's a benefit package for my job. It wasn't mandatory, at least uh, back then, you know, when they first started. Mm. This. And, and, and we've kept it up this whole time. Now the government's gotten involved in on it, and uh, with all this legislation and everything, but it initially started from the corporations. Yeah, but it's a money that you are getting uh, paid. Uh, well, you're not getting paid, but the company is paying on your behalf, so you are getting something for nothing no i work he works aj <laughs> yeah I mean, it's not nothing uh, i have to show up on time every day and do my job i mean it's not nothing i mean they pay uh, you if, a check for that if they paid me a check in my on my income and said uh no to the benefit package i mean i might find a different company that gives me a benefit package mm. because that's what they initially started it out for was this is the benefit package that this company wants to pay you. And then you could look around and find a benefit package from another company that might be a little bit better. You might so, get paid a little bit more or, you know. So that's what Medicare for all comes in. You don't have to look around for another job. Yeah. You always have it. You have a job or not, you have insurance. Yeah, 
that's what that's what it does. But it 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 is too large. It's just too much. Too much uh, for who? It's it's too much for America. America. We have a whole lot of citizens. We have a whole lot of doctors. Corruption uh, is already bad. I mean, they've had the on the news where they will go to a parking lot where a doctor has been claiming all these cases of uh, seeing all these people, and and the parking lot will be empty. Mm. And uh, there's no way they could monitor the entire country and every bill that comes in. Uh, corruption would be uh, tremendous here. So who's corrupt? Are the doctors corrupt? Are the system corrupt? Hospitals? What uh, is, what is, where is the corruption? Insurance there? companies? I, I, I couldn't tell you uh, that it's not all the above. Because... All they have to do is file a claim. So how do you think other countries do it then and do it well? And what do you think their secret is? I mean, when you, in any country that has Medicare for all, there's never been any kind of referendum to get rid of it. Nobody's ever tried to get rid of it. No one's ever tried to pass laws to limit it. The people don't want to get rid of it. Why do you think that is? The people do the same thing here as they do there. They'll complain about it. Mm. We, we got Obamacare. Or Biden care, and they complain about it, mm-hmm. and they complain about it, and then they, uh, they they say, oh, somebody comes along and says, oh, well, we're going to fix that. We're going to we're going to do this. You just elect me, we'll we'll, we'll fix everything. We'll get it all right. And uh, all you have to do is uh, vote for me, and then they vote for him, and then and then they uh, and they pass along to the next guy, and then they pass along to the next guy. And they try to do a little bit of something, and then they pass along the next guy. And the problem just sits there. And, mm-hmm. and it, it, it may change a little bit to the left or to the right, but it doesn't ever get fixed. It's just another set of problems. So is it a uniquely American problem, is what you're saying? No, it's not a uniquely American problem because i got I got friends in the U.K. that complain about it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're not sitting over there saying, we don't have no problems. Mm-hmm. They're saying the same thing we say. we got problems. And, and there's no uh, instrument that fixes this problem and then the next problem. It, it, you wind up band-aiding this thing, and then the, the blood comes out over there. Describe their problems. I mean, what kind of problems they say that they have. They can't uh, see a doctor within a, uh, a period of time. Uh, doctors are overworked, underpaid. They don't live in a free market uh, they, they don't make their own, uh, own, uh, like charges. They can't say they're going to charge what they want to for a specific procedure. You think they should be able to? Of course. There's, if I'm a welder and I want to make $150 an hour, you might be able to find somebody to pay $100, pay $100 an hour down the road. But I'm I'm the best welder around. You're gonna pay 150 to me, or you're gonna pay somebody down the road. There's a single payer, right? There's a single okay. payer. So the government pays them. Well, they have private insurance also. They do have private insurance, yeah. um, okay, but they don't. They it's only supplementary. It, it'll it'll help them to get their own room, you know, in a hospital, yeah. so they yeah. don't have to book up with somebody else. Yeah, and so Singapore is they have that as well. Yeah, widely regarded as the best in the world, uh, Singapore, but. Another story. Okay, I, I have family in the UK. Yeah, and um, uh, this person got sick, really sick, as mean as got cancer, and they never had any problem seeing a doctor. So it's something serious, I guess. The way that system, their system works is is based on your seriousness. So. If you have a broken toe, they'll see you right away. But if you need... A, like if you have knee pain or something, it's not yeah, going to be right away. Yeah. So if you need a surgery to fix your knee that can wait another six months, then you'll be seen in six months. 
Um, but you'll be seen. Yeah, you'll be seen and it'll be free. You won't get the bill afterwards. Uh, now, if you have cancer, you won't get a bill. You'll get the best care that they have available at that time. Um, free of charge. You're not going to get a bill for a private room or any other room. Um, same thing um, with the, um, anything else. Um, if your kid is sick, they'll be seen. So, Regardless of your financial condition. So here you can be seen if uh, upon you having a problem, any problem you have, you can be seen pretty much uh, immediately. Uh, if you have insurance. If you have insurance uh, or if, you're, if you don't have insurance and you're on Medicare, if you're on Medicaid. Sure. Uh, yeah, you can, you can be seen. If you don't have insurance and you're... Uh, you know, you're supposed to have insurance, you know, for your taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, or I, you pay, I, uh, uh, then, then there's, then there is, uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, like the United Way, uh, all kinds of services here in the United States, uh, for breast cancer, for, for, uh, you know, American Heart Association. We got all kinds of charities out there that are helping people all the time. And yet millions die every year without insurance. Millions die insurance mm, sure so the fact that two-thirds of all bankruptcies are caused by medical bills isn't that's not a problem for you at all uh no actually and that not. doesn't happen anywhere in europe ever okay how is that but, possible but they they still are surviving and thriving all these uh uh physicians that didn't get their bill paid how does that how did they do that physicians yeah, physicians, hospitals, and uh, you know medical practices. They didn't get paid because they they filed bankruptcy on them, but yet they're still making money. Sure, it's and because they're charging the insurance, the people that have insurance, and they charge them more. Yeah, that's why, and I the mean, prices are exorbitant. That's why. I mean, uh, health insurance. Well, not health insurance, but health in the industry is the only industry where their prices are not listed. In, in Europe, it is. Yeah. 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 That's, that. That irritates me. Uh, I mean, any office you go, it, it's yeah. it's not. It, it it would be if it was a free market. It would you would be able to see the menu of how much it costs you. You would be able to drive down the street and on the front of the building they'd say, "Oh, you got a broken leg, get a cast here." You don't need a free market for that. The Europeans don't have a free market for it, and they still do it. If you go to Singapore right now, yeah, I'm just saying it's not Europe, but they tell you right away what it's going to cost. You know it. Yeah, they, they tell you right away what it's going to cost. You know what? Because the fact that uh, th th there's there's no change in the price because it's it's government listed. You got to charge X amount of dollars, you and can't it should raise be that price. You shouldn't be able to. Why should you? It's the same. If everyone's doing the same service, why would it be different costs anywhere? I mean, what's the difference? Okay, you got a broken leg. Is every broken leg the same? No. Okay, there you go. Oh, well, maybe one's a compound fracture, and one's not. Yeah, one's going to be more. Okay. But even so, a compound fracture here should cost the same over here and over here and over here. It's the, the same procedure. The changes. And that's what the price. What about an x-ray? You yeah. might pay $1,000 one place and $300 over here. Why? What's yeah, the difference? That's, that's, that's a good question. I, I, well, I, I know the question. Like it's the corrupt. Price, but if the you, free market doesn't work in uh, health insurance. It's not the free market in our health insurance. Oh, it's a racket is what it is. It is. Big time. <laughs> Definitely. That. But. But the government isn't the fix. You're wrong about that. And how do I know you're wrong? Every country in Europe has it, and it works just fine. So what you're saying is not you're not living in reality. You're living in a theoretical construct, but it works over there. So how's, how does it not work? How is the government not doing it right? Are they different from we are? They're just people, right? They're just bureaucrats like we have. So what are they doing differently? You're saying it works. No, it works. If you look at health outcomes in any metric, they beat us every time, whether it's mortality rate, um, women giving birth, uh, just health outcomes in general, they beat us everywhere. I mean, how is that possible? Okay. Uh, I'll just go with that. Okay, they're beating us. Uh, do they have our politics? Like what? I mean, everyone's got politics. What do you mean? Uh, okay. Here we live in the South. Uh, in, you know, we're in Texas. Mm. Uh, uh, 
we have a, a, a heavy red state. It's changing, but we have a heavy red state. We do. And uh, we have people that uh, are completely against it. Yes, we do. All right. Uh, why, when Hillary Clinton brought this up uh, in the 90s, mm. that she was shot down by our politics, by yeah. our politicians, the people that we put in office. Because they're bought and paid for by the um, insurance companies and every other lobbyist firm you can imagine. That's why. That's all we get shot down for that. I've heard that excuse before. And, it's true. And when I, I see the evidence that they put forward to say that our politicians are bought, They'll show a listing of, of insurance companies that gave money to that politician. Mm. And they'll say, oh, look, this is, this is the amount. And it's like 20000 from this insurance. Who, who what? Okay, what, you, you're forgetting super PACs. Dollars. Super PACs, they don't have to disclose. You have no idea how much they're giving. You have no idea. That's just what's visible. Super PACs don't have to announce that at all. It's, it's not transparent. So you have no idea what, what the actual number is. And if you want to know how much involvement there is, when they were passing the ACA, I mean, who was invited to the White House? If you have no idea, like you just said, then what evidence do you have to say that that's, that's what's happening? Because the super PACs are massive. That's why. There are tens of millions of dollars. Where the, where's it going? It's but not going for the common good. That's, that's telling me that super PACs are doing something, hmm. tens of millions of dollars, and it's coming from the healthcare industry, but yet you said you can't see it. It's not just the healthcare industry. Oh, well, there's a lot of other uh, factors involved. But to the other point, there, really quickly, when they were writing the ACA, who did Obama invite to the White House to help write the legislation? Remember, who invited? Yeah. Who was there? <laughs> look, look, go look at the videos. Who's there? I mean, ACA was written by health insurance companies. Was it uh, actually a Heritage Foundation? It's uh, a Republican plan. Yeah, right? it's a Republican plan. <laughs> they invited all... Why would you invite the health insurance companies to write the law? What what possible input could they have? I mean, they're not doctors. They're CEOs. They're business people. What does it matter? What would they? What are they going to have? What kind of input were they going to have? Uh, they're the donors. That's why they were there. Uh, Plain oh, and simple. The, the, you, you just made an assumption. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm just saying. You tell me, tell me what they were gonna, what they had to offer. What did they have to offer? Of yeah. course, they could, they they could help. They're trying to mend together two different sides, uh, the public and uh, industry, and they wanted to keep even even uh, uh, our vice president <laughs> said she wanted to keep the insurance. You could you can keep your insurance. Mm. Uh, there was one. You know, Bernie Sanders has said, oh, we're going to get rid of all that. We're going to go straight government. But uh, a whole lot. He was the only one telling the truth. And, yeah. and uh, <laughs> but, but we still we still can't pass it. You can't pass it because. because even Joe Biden was saying it's, it's, it's between over 10 years. He said it's between 40 and 70 trillion dollars. Where are we going to get that money at? We have the money. The I mean, problem, money yeah. is not the problem. Money, we have the money because we're, we're spending too much money as it is. It's being wasted, actually. I mean, you send it to the insurance company where the money goes and dies, basically. I mean, it, it goes it, to pay the CEOs, yeah. the advertisements. Cut the middleman out. Cut the companies out. Go straight to the government as a single payer. Yeah. You have all the expenses gone. You're not paying the extra stuff. I mean, I'll give you an example of a company that pays almost $350 million dollars. One company. Oh, that's right. Three hundred fifty million dollars to the insurance company. I'm 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 lost. The money you're saying that is not there. If one Fortune five hundred company pays three hundred and fifty million dollars on their behalf of their em employees to an insurance company, just put another five hundred of those together with three hundred fifty million dollars. How much money you have in a year? You should be okay. You should be just fine. I, I'm, I'm still a little lost on that. But, okay, one Fortune 500 company pays, what did you say, $250 million? $350 million. $350 million to the insurance company. One company. Which company is it? <laughs> <laughs> I shall not name names right now. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, just take uh, 
I mean, you can pick anyone. Exxon Mobil. Okay. I, I'm just saying that from my perspective, I pay my insurance. My job helps pay me pay my insurance. I uh, I think I am a typical American. Uh, and uh, I spent $2,000 of my own money this year. Why should I complain? Why you should complain? Because that money that was being paid to an insurance company can be transferred to you so by your employer instead so of going to an insurance company. Would they? <laughs> they would. would? They would. They, they just turn the check around and say, Ted, here's your money. Yeah, here's because your- uh, uh, they can pay you more. Instead of paying they, it they to, could. <laughs> that's not the question. Would they? It, well, they will have two choices: either pay you or pay the government. No, there's a third choice there that you're missing. What? Which one is that? The, the third choice is to put it in the pocket. Now, they, can, they, can, to, they can, they can, they can do that. They can do that right they now. They don't have to give it to the government. No, they can do that right now. They can just say, "Hey, we're gonna." From next year, we're not going to provide health insurance for employees. A lot of companies have done that, by the way. Yeah. Which is, I guess, could you afford the insurance you have now without this job? Just out of your own pocket? Out of my own pocket? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've, I've, I've seen that. Cobra? Ooh. Could Cobra you afford Cobra expensive. every month? No, I would not. Yeah, I most would people can't. Even the people with the five cars probably couldn't afford that. And the big house in the... <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I disagree with that. I yeah, think there's a lot of people that have a lot of money. I don't. In fact, yeah. the the numbers don't bear that out. Americans are bad at saving. They're bad at keeping money. Uh, I'm not sure where you got those numbers because it's not very good, especially right now. A lot of people are in trouble. They're underwater. I don't know. Why do we need a middleman anyway? Why do we need insurance companies telling doctors? what kind of services they can provide, uh, what kind of drugs they can prescribe. I mean, well, why do we need... Insurance companies? Uh, why do we need insurance companies on cars? I mean, you have car insurance. Why do you need insurance companies on health, on, on your house? I mean, these mm-hmm. are expensive items, and you don't... Uh, have money in your bank account to say, okay, well, my house set on fire. Mm. Now I'm going to pay off my house because I don't want to. I don't want to. I, I, don't wanna, you, I know, mean, you have to pay these. You have to pay these insurance companies in order to uh, keep your house, you know, and and all your valuables. I mean, car insurance is required by law, but house insurance is yes. not required by law. Yes, it is. You have to have house insurance if you have a a, a loan on your house. Loan. But if your house is paid off, there's no law. Are we paid off as humans? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you pay off your house, you still carry you you carry an insurance insurance because there are a lot of other factors involved, like you know, natural disaster. But you don't have, you can you can go buy liability insurance on your car if you don't. If if you got it paid off, and it's just the the minimum, and and even if you didn't. Uh, have liability and you I mean you have to get caught I mean, that's what I'm saying people, so by law out. by law you're required you just get a ticket yeah you would require prison mm. no you can lose your driver's license you could lose your driver's license you still drive yeah <laughs> you could yeah. yeah so what you're saying is what's required by law right yeah it's required by law I don't have to have a car but I have to have a working body to be able to work and provide for my family. This is something we have to be able to do, and the only way you can do that is if you can go see a doctor. I see the insurance company as not the issue. Mm. I, I don't see the insurance company as the as the issue between the, the, the sides. I see the government as being the issue between the sides. What is the government's fault here? What is the government's fault here? Um. They are not very uh, good at monitoring their uh, their balance between uh, government control and 
free market. But in regard to health insurance, what's the problem? Like, what are they doing specifically? Uh, specifically? Yeah, I'm not um, sure what. Regarding, not insurance, but regarding their ability to monitor whether the, the corruption involved in them. So not, not from the from the insurance perspective, because that's that's their own. That's that's a, a uh, industry of its own. You know, we don't as a as the government, we don't monitor whether or not uh, the insurance company is is corrupt or not. We have we, we're monitoring whether the whether the these cases that are being filed to Medicare, Medicaid, uh, places like that uh, that the government pays for, we pay for out of our taxes, uh, whether they're legit or not. So, are you saying they shouldn't be regulated in any way? The insurance companies. The insurance company? Or should uh, they be a free-for-all, just whatever? What do you mean? I mean, should they be regulated by the government, by any, any regulation at all? Uh, I think uh, that, that would, you know, I'd have to take a look at the legislation to see, see, see where they're regulated and, and whether it's needed. Uh, I know for a fact that I, I see it all the time where the government's uh, uh, regulations hinder different uh, industries. So, you know, I don't know uh, specifically about the insurance. All right, so we're back. Uh, Ted, you were mentioning something about regulation, how they affect different industries. And uh, so how does regulations affect uh, health care? Uh, I'm certainly not an expert on this at all. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. So Neither of us are. Yeah, oh, we I, just play one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can't really uh, comment on uh, how they affect the uh, medical industry here in the United States, but I I have a, a suspicion that uh, you know that regulations are uh, very uh, much hindering our healthcare industry. Health care here in the United States. Okay. Uh, my, you know, family works in the health care industry. And if I could, uh, you know, phone home. That would <laughs> you can phone a friend if you need to. Uh, or do 50-50. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So nothing on regulation um, just yet. We can probably come back to that at some other um, conversation. But... Um, Okay, so is any, I guess, how would you, what would you do to fix the health industry we have? Well, I mean, how would you improve it? If you have any ideas about that, how would you cover everybody? That's the question. If Medicare for all is not the answer, how are we going to cover everybody else? Uh, I think that's the same way as saying, uh, how do we get everybody a car? Mm. Uh, there's so many people out there that don't have a car. Or how many? How do we, uh, you know, get everybody a house or or everybody? Uh, you know, there there are much more. You know, how do we feed everybody? I mean, th these are problems all over the world. There's problems here. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, but the the it, it, again, it's, it's a yeah. Go ahead. You mentioned all over the world, but again, the world does cover people 100. percent So obviously, they're doing it. So how are they doing obviously it? Obviously, they. Don't feed everybody. No, no, the insurance. Uh, insurance. How do they do that if... Like, you make it sound like it's, it's an insurmountable problem, but obviously dozens of countries do it with no problem. How do they do it? That's my question. I, I don't... I never got a good answer on this question. Like, how are they able to do it and we're not? How are they able to... Cover everybody, every single person? Uh, with enormous taxes. Yeah. yeah. And that's not tenable to you. I don't think it's uh, fair, actually. I don't think that a, a person that takes good care of themselves should have to pay that much taxes. I think that the tax rate should be going down instead of going up. Hmm. AJ? My question is, uh, how do we fix the problem of uh, covering everybody? Because it is costing us money if somebody does not have insurance, when they go see a doctor or they go end up in a hospital, a motorcycle rider that 
does not have health insurance, he ends up in a hospital. We all pay for it through higher costs when we go see the doctor. A motorcycle uh, rider should be covered on his auto insurance. But that's beside the point. It could be somebody uh, playing basketball. Yeah. Uh, it could be anything of the sort. Uh, you know, they keep trying. Obamacare was a try. Uh, Hillary care was a try. Uh, I mean, it, w- our politics don't allow us to do this. Well, we but might politics is, I mean, it's besides the point. The, the first thing we have to come up with is, is, a, is a solution. What is the solution? Is it Medicare for all is the solution? Is uh, uh, having private and uh, public insurance a solution? Uh, public option is a solution? I mean, there is a solution out there somewhere. There's there's a lot of attempts, a lot of, uh, you know, it, it, a bill comes forward all the time. Bill dies. Bill dies. Bill mm. dies every time. You know, it, it, it never gets there. And and it's because of our politics and our our uh, uh, mindset. Uh, and, and that might be a mindset that comes back from the beginning of, of you know, our founding fathers. That uh, we wanted liberty. We didn't want a uh, tyrannical uh, government. We wanted to be able to pay our own bills and do our own things, and then and then we started to get the government involved more, and then uh, it has taken a very crazy turn now, uh, where we have big, huge corporate conglomerates involved in our health insurance, and we have the government involved in our health insurance. Personally. Uh, from my standpoint, because I take good care of myself somewhat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, you know, I've uh, been able, fortunate to uh, stay out of any, you know, real medical problems. So, But not, we cannot talk about these problems based on our own experience. I mean, everybody has different experiences. Yeah, I guess and you can step back and see the big picture. Yeah, so problems like these, as issues like these, you have to look at it at a broader, from a broader picture, more like a thirty thousand feet, okay. and you have to look at how we can solve a problem that affects so many people, and. I mean, it affects indirectly every single person. You may think that it does not affect you. Okay. But every time you go and buy medicine or every time you go see a doctor, it affects you. So. Uh, Based on cost mm, alone. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so we have Bernie's plan. Then we have... Uh, Warren, Warren had a plan. Yeah, uh, Buttigieg had a plan. Uh, a lot of plans. Yeah. They all had plans. Mm. Yeah, and, and no and solutions. Yeah, so Medicare for all who wants it. Or yeah. those, <laughs> whatever he said. Yeah. So we have all these bills. We have these plans of people that that I I would uh, suggest aren't very uh, truthful in their plan. I think that uh, they they have the plan that is going to get them elected. They don't have the plan that's going to pass the Congress and the Senate. I, I think uh, that's that's their plan. It's just to get elected. They're not. They're uh, and people are looking for. Oh, okay, who's going to give me something in this election? Okay, that's the person I want to. That's the person I want to hire. Uh, they're not seeing that 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 person. They could put that forward, and it's been put forward a, a whole bunch of times, but there's no support. There's no su- support here for it at all. And when Obamacare went uh, to be, uh, you know, they, they, they screwed that whole 
plan up. They had the. Uh, we know. Yeah, they, they screwed it all up from what his original intent was. And then, then the website wouldn't go. And when the website could go, uh, you know. Why do you think Obama couldn't do that? I mean, why was he not able to deliver on his promise? The public option? Yeah. Uh, because of our politics. Joe Lieberman? <laughs> because everybody, you know, that he has to get it by. So I'm not voting for that. Was it because of the insurance companies? Pharmaceutical that, companies? I, I think that uh, they had a whole lot of say in it. As my point earlier. Yeah. But <clears throat> if you can't get it past the, you know, the, the, the senators and the congressmen, you're not getting anywhere. I don't, I don't you know, I mean, you're not going to pass it. I mean, you can I'm in agreement with that. Um, we've talked about it before. You know, politicians aren't interested in uh, solutions like that. They like to fight, for sure, but they don't... Um, they don't want the political risk of it. I mean, they want these issues out there so that they can keep on fighting. The, the reason, w- oh, of course, yeah. uh, but the reason why I bring up the website, if a freaking website could be a problem that, that raises all kinds of crap out there for, for people, how are they going to fund you know, $40 trillion without having... Uh, uh, but we do that already. We problem. do it, and it... The website didn't come out perfect, obviously. It works now, though. Yeah. It worked within a couple of months or whatever, but... but you would think that it was uh, somebody, uh, you know, causing mass hysteria mm. over, you know, some huge event, but it's just a website. But but people didn't like it to begin with, and then when you have one little hitch... Of course. A, a small little thing like that, then everybody's going to go crazy. But now, how many people are covered? 20, 30 million? By Obamacare? Yeah. It's fairly popular among and the people who have it. My sister, she works in the healthcare industry, and she is part of billing. She said it, it sucks. Yeah. It doesn't cover nothing. Well, for some plans, it doesn't, maybe. Some plans, it does. Obviously, people have it for some reason. I mean. I don't know if it's obvious, but I think they are mandated to have it. Either that or you pay a fine. Yeah. One of the two. I mean, uh, of course, I'll uh, probably... I mean, I agree with the that your sister, you know, telling us uh, the truth that, you know, it doesn't cover anything because it's not meant to cover everything. Yeah, it's it's just meant to cover uh, essential life-threatening things and, you know, more like a emergency insurance than anything else. Mm. Yeah. It's the best they could do. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to get away is... Uh, you know, go to Medicare up for all or single payer system where uh, people are covered no matter what their job situation is or what their financial conditions are. I think Ted's point is probably pretty accurate, though. People don't want to pay more taxes. They don't want to pay more. Uh, they think they're going to pay more. They'll probably pay less overall. That's how most countries are. They pay less for because they're paying less for insurance. But Yeah, I mean, you are paying right now. You may think that you're not paying, but you are paying. I mean, the cost that I just you know mentioned earlier was somewhere around thirty three, thirty four thousand dollars. That cost is being paid. You can say it is being paid as a premium, or you can say it as being paid as a taxes. It's the same thing. You don't have that money, and I'll never have it. Don't say that, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they're never going to give me a raise and say, "Hey, this is what we've been paying for you all these years, and now we're getting rid of this. We're going to go to a different system." Here they're not system. getting rid of it. They're going to uh, transfer that money to to the government. They're going to send it to the government instead of sending it to insurance company. It'll be sent over to. You know, health and human services. That, Most likely. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I've read that in any of their plans. The plans are complicated, Ted. I mean, nobody, who reads all the plans anyway? Yeah, exactly. 1,200 uh, pages. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody it, reads it, them. It, they don't even like read them. 12,000. Yeah. Yeah. It's an incredible amount. Oh. Yeah. So it's a, look, it's a, it's a tough question, obviously. I mean, uh, as far as the, uh, the mechanics of it all, obviously, it's difficult. My question is that, 
if they really wanted to do it, they could do it. Um, if you, they needed help, they could go overseas and see how they do it. And you know, yeah, I think they know all that. I know. Yeah, I do too. I think that uh, they realize the political bomb that it is. One little thing goes wrong, and their entire party is shut down. Yeah, I think that's nobody's going to ever get elected on that party if they if they actually get it passed. They know it's not going to pass before they get started. I think it'll be popular. It might be popular after a while of getting uh, the kinks worked out. Yeah, but those kinks are going to going to. Well, here's the thing. Obamacare was extremely unpopular. You could oh, say yeah. the same thing about that. That Democrats never get elected again because it was so unpopular. They got elected again. He won twice. I mean... Um, yeah, it may be because he got the insurance companies in there to, to uh, it may smooth be. things around. You know? It was still unpopular. Because, oh, yeah, it was unpopular. And there was a lot of problems it with it. unpopular with one particular party. But there was nothing that a black man was going to leave there without... Half of America being uh, no, I know. Unpo- <laughs> well, I think that's unliked. You know, that's even with Biden right now. Half the Mer- country hates him, so it's whatever. Yeah. It's the way it is. Yeah. What do you think, AJ? Uh, I think it is. I mean, it's um, uh, half the country is not going to agree with it, no matter what. Who who says it? Even he, the half that doesn't like it really, that one that yeah. hate, they need it the most. Like they're the poorest. <laughs> they're the ones that need it. The red states need it yeah. the most. They have the worst health insurance in the country, but they're going to hate it the most. That's the way it is. They take out more in out of the system than they put in, but they, but they don't hate see, the government. But they don't see it that <laughs> way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are those those countries that turn to socialism, that they say, "Oh, well, Cuba or Venezuela or or you know." This is what's going to happen here, mm. and 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 I don't think that that's true at all. No, I mean uh, I don't think that the United States could go down uh, that path and uh, uh, falter that way. I mean, uh, there's a whole lot of lies out there. Uh, if we could ever get it passed, it probably would be pretty popular. Uh, yeah, Republicans know that for sure. That's why they fight so hard against it. They might never get reelected if that passed, like you said. If on the other, on the flip side, you know, if it had problems, yeah, Democrats might not get elected. But if it was successful, it might be the other way. Who knows? Yeah, I just have to see the bill. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd, I'd really have to see what they're gonna cover and what they're not. If they just say, oh, "Okay, well, you guys can do whatever you want to, and we'll just pay the bill." Yeah, that's that's a magic plan. That's a, I don't think that's, that's a fairy tale plan. Yeah. Even the Europeans don't do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they don't do that. They have to have a bill that's going to say what's going to be covered and what's not. Yeah. They would probably say, uh, well, you don't, again, you have to have oversight, but medically necessary procedures, of course, like like insurance now, right? That's how it is now. They don't cover nose jobs because you want a nose job. It, it, <laughs> you it, actually it, have to. it depends. Oh, maybe if it's for if you're in an accident or something. Yeah. Or if you can't breathe, maybe they say, well. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it all depends upon, you know, the circumstances. that they'll, they'll, they'll cover just about anything, mm-hmm. uh, depending upon the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. You all right? Uh, I was just looking at uh, what the Americans' percentage-wise is uh, as chronic disease. We were at uh, 28% of Americans have multiple chronic diseases. Yeah, we're pretty bad. And oh, yeah, it's only fourteen percent in Britain and Netherlands, and eighteen percent in France. There's, there's a. I, I just found out recently that the UK monitors how much sugar they put in particular products. If you, if you put in more sugar than than they allow, then you have to pay a tax on that, mm. so that they don't consume the same crap that we consume. No. No, that was we talked about this the other day. Um, there was a uh, in the early 20th century there was a debate about what caused obesity. Is it fat or sugar? Remember this? Talked about this? Yeah. Two doctors. One said it was fat. One sugar. Um, the one that said it was it was sugar was right. Right. We know that now. It's sugar that causes for the most part obesity. But um, they had a very powerful lobby. So they <laughs> they they wanted to make low fat foods right. And beca- the reason for that is because if you make low-fat foods, it needs flavor. And the way to flavor that is with sugar. 
So their profit margins went through the roof, and they ended up winning that debate. But propaganda was very strong, like with tobacco and things like that. It's just um, we don't have the kind of regulations you would need to fix that problem. Yeah. Uh, but who is the government to tell us what we can put in our body? Well, they do it, obviously. Drugs, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I, th- I think when it's um, – when you're being lied to by a corporation, they should be able to regulate that. So it should, they were lying about how bad sugar was. The manufacturers, they knew it. They had the data already, but they lied about it. So there should be a price to pay for that for sure. Tobacco, same thing. They lied about it. You should at least regulate it that way, right? But tobacco, you, you can see a, a clear uh, road to destruction. Yeah. Uh, Health care. You issues. couldn't see it back then, though. Early on, you couldn't. They didn't know. They had no idea. They said it was healthy. It was healthy to it was healthier to smoke than it was not to smoke. Remember those commercials and those ads? Um, yeah, so they were lying through their teeth, obviously. The oil companies lying about climate change. But sugar, even to this day, I mean, it depends upon the amount. That's why they limit the yeah. amount in the UK. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's not like it, you can eat sugar and you're just going to blow up to 600 pounds. No, it's not. I mean, look, if, if they're providing insurance... And obesity is a major cause of, you know, medical cost. I, they should be able to regulate how much you take in. I mean, they're, they're providing that, it, so. And that could never, ever be done. You could say, oh, that, 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 you well, eat certain amounts of this. No, I see what you're saying. You could regulate how much is in food, though. That's what you could do. You could regulate that. Yeah. Now, you might eat 10,000 of those. But You're going you're gonna to be able to uh, buy a bag of sugar at the store? I'm sure. Okay. Well, yeah. Then, but that's, that, again, that's a limit of what they can do, though. So you shouldn't worry about it too much. They can only do so much. I mean, you know, you seem like worried about regulation. Like, but uh, like I said, you, you can overcome that pretty easily. It's not like it's an insurmountable I mean, uh, obstacle, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Very clever. It's like oh, okay. drugs. I mean, you can go get this, drugs. This way. Like, I turn the base this way so it's, like, right under this, you know? Like, so they're parallel. Like, here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Can you edit that out, AJ? Yeah, I will. (laughs) So, um, yeah, it seems uh, more symbolic than anything else. Um, Obviously, you can eat whatever you want. Um, It's not going to make much difference, but... I mean, you used to not be able to drink alcohol here. Mm -hmm. That's true. How'd that work out? Yeah, it didn't work out too well, did it? I mean, you tell anybody in any society, you can't do this. What's the one thing they're going to go do? This. <laughs> whatever this is. Yeah, whatever that is. We're rebellious, for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, better wear a mask. What are they going to do? Not uh, wear a mask. This is just a look. <laughs> uh, we're spending almost $3 tr- trillion dollars a year on health care spending, actually, in the United States. $3 trillion. That's pretty good. That's almost our entire... Uh, Budget. Budget, yeah. I mean, U.S. GDP that's, is somewhere around 20, why, 22 trillion. trillion. Yeah. So that's why when Biden was approached with it during the campaign, he was like, uh, that's uh, $40 trillion over 10 years. Some say it's $70 trillion. Yeah. Uh, we'd never be able to afford it. But the thing the is, the, are the, are the only the way we look at it is as government paying for it. But government is not going to pay for it. The money will come from the same place that three trillion is coming from right now. Where is the three trillion coming from? It's coming from somewhere, right? Mainly employers. It says uh, sixty percent, I think, is uh, somewhere yeah, are covered by employers. Employers. So sixty percent of that money is coming from the employers, and rest is. Coming from private and other, so three trillion dollars is coming from somewhere. So, what we're saying is that, you know, the paying system is just going to change. You're just going to put a new label on the bill, something like that. Instead of uh, Mastercard paying for it, in other words, Visa will pay for it this time. You know. But this way you can negotiate rates because yeah. the government's um, the sole pay, payer, so it's easy to negotiate. 
and they have to do business with the government. And they don't have a choice. If they're the ones covering, you have to. You, know, you don't have. You can't say I'm not going to negotiate. I'm going to charge what I want. So on Bernie Sanders' uh, campaign, they asked him about it. Bernard. Yeah, he said that uh, upon putting this in place, two million people would lose their jobs. Which a lot of people. How does he know that? Voting against you. How does he know that? That was the estimate from the uh, from the uh, libertarian uh, think tank that put it together. Do they have credibility? Absolutely. I think they don't. <laughs> because the, 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 the ideology is a joke anyway. It's, it, it's, it's always libertarians that come up with these numbers. Man. They're all, it's, it's always. It's, it's always. The, they're, they're not Republican. They're not Democrat. Oh, no, no. Oh, they're Republican. They're right wingers, and you know it. They don't like taxes. They don't like government. And guess what? No society is libertarian. You know why? It's garbage. There's nothing. There's nothing intellectually honest about it. It's all that private enterprise can do everything right, and government can't do anything right. Come on, Ted. Nonsense. We know that. No country's run like that for a good reason. It'll collapse. Free markets can't exist without government. Cannot exist. We've tried it. You got to bail out company after company after company. Our whole industry in America is based on government intervention. Everything you look at, every technology you look at, the government has had some hand in creating or funding. Everything. Computers, GPS. Take your pick, man. Doesn't matter. Private implies. Now. Are you saying Apple oh. did not invent GPS? <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that. <laughs> Come on. Man. Government research. That's what it is. It was Pentagon. Well, it's one of those things where, um, oh, there's more than, DARPA? There's more than one government in this planet. Now, yeah. What did, what did uh, Sudan do for uh, GPS? Uh, they, uh, well, and then they committed genocide. What, what else? No, they, they, provided, <laughs> they provided a target for Bill Clinton to hit. <laughs> I thought that was Somalia. <laughs> no, it was Sudan. I mean, uh, you're only speaking of the United States like we're the only game out there. I mean... There's all kinds. Of, I'm not. What, what did Singapore do for just GPS? I mean, uh, we spend a whole lot of money here on research and development. We do. And uh, a lot of our health care is spent on research and development. Oh, more, from the government? More, yeah. more, than, more than any other country. Yeah, that's true. So Government the, spending. The, the government, uh, did they have anything to do with the, the pandemic uh, immunization? I mean, they rolled it out. I mean, not, not, I mean, finding the, the, uh, they funded a lot of that. Yeah. They did. Yeah. That's I mean, what they our, do. Our, our, our government spends a whole lot of money and our private corporations, of course, they're, they're in it to get that billion dollars they're going to get from finding the cure. I know. The immunization. Most so. of the research is conducted by universities and, and NIH. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they're funded by, by government, and mostly no. government, mostly. Look, I mean, look at the numbers. You can. It's mostly government funding. I mean, corporations can't afford they, research. They, they can't. It takes way too expensive. The government can have as much money as it wants to. It's yeah. no problem. But this is where the money goes. MIT, take your pick. I mean, that's why well, we have the internet, right? <laughs> that's what's where it comes from. I have uh, very deep pockets, Ted. Very deep pockets. Government is the only one that can, you know. Is the only entity that can afford these type of things. They can take a loss. Yeah. Whereas corporations can't, just can't afford it. They just, I mean, it's not in their interest. But, but they do give. What do they give? They, they fund colleges all the time. Well, I'm sure they do fund some colleges. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they do it for PR purposes and they write it off. That's normal. Uh, they, they write. I, I'll tell you, uh, there are companies that... Uh, Right around here, that that fund University of Texas at Dallas. Why? Because they want the talent, right? They want the talent. Of course. Of course. Yeah, of course. There's always a reason. Yeah. Um, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm not saying they don't do that. Yeah. Right? But somebody's somebody's funding them. Sure. Well, they, they fund them all the time. Well, we're talking about the majority of the funding comes from the government, though. I'm sure private well, enterprise does it, too. Uh, yeah. But the government has the, the vast sum of money, too. I mean, now yeah. they're Something funded they mainly them. by Department of Education. The yeah. university you're talking about. Is mainly funded by Department of Education because most of the grants and scholarship, all that comes from them. 
it's not coming from the that company. The company that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they 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 do some things. They obviously have, but, uh, have certain schools. I mean, they have they provided their name, one of their founders' name. You can awfully close here, AJ. Yeah, be able to narrow it down <laughs> slightly. We don't want to yeah, give too much away. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all we're saying. Um, yeah, I don't know how we got in the free market. How do we get there again? But we did. They're not really free. Not really. The freest market's in Hong Kong, though. It's Hong number Kong. one. Do you know that? I, I I can't even imagine that they're part of China and yet they're a free market. Yeah, but they're kind of an independent. You know, don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. So you know what? <laughs> you know where we are on the list. <laughs> According to the Heritage Foundation, the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank wow. who loves yeah. America like yeah. Star Spangled is awesome. Uh, the they wear American tree. flag on their ass all the time. They don't put it on the wall. <laughs> 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 they rank America as number seventeen, the yeah. freest markets in the world. Number seventeen, pretty crazy. I'm not surprised. No, no I'm not surprised either. But uh, yeah, no uh, market is completely um, free of intervention. It can't be. It's just it'll collapse. Okay. All right, uh, to just to change the topic a little bit, um, Ted, uh, what do you think about uh, Texas' uh, new gun laws they just passed? What do you think about that? And just as a brief rundown, um, so it's not going to require a permit or a license to carry a gun, concealed or otherwise. Um, you can use any holster you like. Suppressors are okay. Um, you can carry it in your hotel room. Yeah. Uh, like uh, any gun, like you can have a machine gun. I hope so. If we're lucky, they'll. Uh, I mean, freedom, right? Uh, I mean, they will even allow a tank if they would. <laughs> 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 yeah. Of course, you got to fight the tyranny of the U.S. government. That's that's yeah. the point, right? Uh, that plus, the tanks are very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, do you do you like the reduced um, restrictions? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. I think it's it's just uh, anything. Texas does pretty much. Uh, you have to put a check mark on it and say, uh, the, "Yeah, I don't uh, agree with that." Especially when it comes to gun laws, uh, I think that uh, there should be a whole lot more restrictions. Yeah, um, I think Greg Abbott was pretty clear about trying to be the uh, state with the loosest gun laws. He was absolutely. pretty. Yeah, he was yeah. very adamant. He wanted about that. Texas to be a sanctuary state for Second Amendment. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he yeah. said. Actually, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So just complete reckless abandon, like you know, just wild west situation. <laughs> so He's really trying to get reelected. That's what it is. Publicity yeah. stunt, obviously. I mean, look, everyone has guns in Texas anyway, so it's one of those. Yeah, it's it's for me. If I was to put some regulations, I would certainly uh, make it to where if you are convicted of a uh, domestic violence. Then you have to have your guns taken away. Mm -hmm. Sure, like a, a serious domestic violence. Yeah, not yeah. something because if you spank your kids or something. Yeah, if it's <laughs> if it's a if it's not serious, I mean, there's a lot of people that that uh, have issues and it's not very serious, no life threatening mm -hmm. situation. But I'm talking about a serious domestic violence. You should have at least a six months to a year. Okay, on the severity, taking them away. You shouldn't have given your name or where you live, because now <laughs> the target on your back. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, no, look you're, look, you're exactly right. These are common sense things, right? I think also background checks are being um, like removed yeah. as yeah. well. No background yes. checks. So yeah. just, you yeah. know, as long as you're 21. I mean, everybody in Texas, whether you, uh, you're mentally ill or not, you should be packing. I, mean, I don't know why middle schools aren't packing in. I'm, I've been um, lobbying for a while now to get that done, but it's not, not going anywhere. I don't just, know what that is. It so. just seems to be uh, idiocracy. Yeah, it's what in, it is in, in Texas. They just don't want freedom. I mean, they don't. They they they're terrified of the idea of freedom, and uh, I don't know what I can do. AJ, what what can we do to convince these people? Uh, I don't think we can do anything. Exactly. Unless we scribe on the gun, say please take them away. That would, that would be the only way. Yeah, man. You would think that shooting up a elementary school to say, hey, you know, these gun things, we might need to regulate them a little bit. No. But no, not, not here. Especially with the pro-life group, you think it would be more amenable to something like that. But no, well, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's like a, the cost of doing business, right? 
Yeah. Wasn't that what Bill O'Reilly said? It's the cost of freedom. That's what Bill O'Reilly said. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's the cost of freedom. It's a price. You pay for freedom. Really? Because uh, other countries don't have mass shootings. Finland doesn't seem to pay any of those costs. <laughs> no, they sure don't. They're pretty yeah. free over there. <laughs> they seem to be pretty happy. Yeah. But um, either way, it's what we have, and we have to work with it, I guess. I've heard people say that uh, they we learned our lesson from Russia. Mm. Uh, then the bad guys are going to have the guns and not the good guys. Yeah, well, they have them now, so I don't know what that's, you know. Yeah, well, there, there's always in a, this fear of the government coming in and trying to, uh, you know, stamp, stomp on your rights or whatever, and you have to have guns to protect yourself against the government. Um, Joe Biden made a statement, if you saw it or not, he says, well, you better have F-15s and nuclear bombs because <laughs> it's, your AR-15 is not going to work against a, a drone or a... Yeah. F-35 or whatever it was, yeah. So it doesn't, it's kind of a fantasy, I've always thought, um, that you're going to somehow fight off a massive military. I think they it, believe... It's a fantasy land. Well, they believe the military is going to turn and side with the people. Yeah. Historically, it's not the case. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. It's why they're in the military. Get, I don't want to say brainwashed, but uh, indoctrinated to not... Question orders, in, anyways. In, indoctrinated into the military? I mean, indoctrinated in the military to not question and do what you're told. But, I mean, who knows? I mean, That's even true. few of them defect. I mean, it's not going to affect anything. No. I mean, most of them are loyal to the United States. Yeah, well, yeah. You because they want to keep their power. I, I question... Uh, <laughs> That to a degree, mm. uh, because of the in, the insurrection at the Capitol, mm. uh, they had a lot of policemen letting people in, and yeah, yeah, and, uh, and so th- they weren't really all about uh, their job. I'm not sure how policemen are. Policemen are kind of a a different breed, a little different breed. They have their own little cult that they subscribe to. Um, it's interesting, but and a lot of those guys believe that anyway. They believe in. Insurrection because <laughs> the people in charge are not their people. But I don't know. I think the military does a better job of indoctrinating than police forces do. But I could be wrong. What do you think, AJ? I think so. Oh, do you know? Yeah. I believe yeah, you're right. But who knows, Ted? We'll see. If it ever happens, we'll see, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll run I mean, video. you know, you had a civil war, right? I'll be here to comment on it. Mm. <laughs> or just look for red red dots anywhere, and then you'll make sure. <laughs> Be very careful out there, all right? Um, you have a disguise. Um, yeah, so that's that's what was happening uh, with Greg Abbott, and um, you know he had Wayne Lapierre of the NRA there, and who was it? Um, uh, Dan Patrick and oh, geez. oh, they were all there. Though, oh man, the whole lineup was. It was all star club there. It's pretty amazing to see yeah. them. I felt safer. I felt like they were. Do you feel safe though? I feel safe with all the guns in in, in Texas. Yeah. I feel like we're gonna be um, okay. All right. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, how about them cowboys then? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. What do you think? Anything else? <laughs> all right. Uh, I guess uh, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Ted Special for guest. yeah Ted for coming by. The good Ted. Not the other one. Uh, spending <laughs> uh-huh. some time with us. Quality time. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he enjoyed it as much as we did. Right, Ted? Absolutely. Great. And great. Um, Very uh, enjoyable. We Very would like to invite you back whenever well, you have time. Let we'll call us it know. an open invitation. All right. Anytime you want to come back, let us know. We'll have a pick a topic and we'll run with it. All right. Uh, pick a topic and I'll study up on the opposite view of yours. Oh. So I can... I can Battle that side. I'm not going to tell you what view I'm taking. <laughs> 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 both sides. All right. There are fine people on both sides. Always. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Ted, for coming in. Appreciate it. Thanks. Guys. All right. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thanks.